What a beautiful morning it is out on the water for another photography adventure. There's a slight touch of a breeze, just the exchange of air temperatures between the land and the water. And the water on the top feels so warm. And you've got this cold air up here. A little bit of mist behind me, as you can see from that exchange of heat. It's the slightest of breeze every now and then, so it's just glassy conditions. The reason why I'm making this video today is to talk about my inflatable canoe, the Lagoon One from Advanced Elements. Thought, tell you about my experience with it so far, big reasons why I chose an inflatable canoe over, you know, a fiberglass or a plastic one. So yeah, well, let's just start with that, I think. And I chose an inflatable, because when I put things on a roof rack of a car, I get terribly nervous. I worry about it the whole trip. Yeah, I'm in the dark now, because the sun's coming up over there. But I'm going this way. Now, it made more sense to me to have an inflatable canoe, keep it inside the car so it's more secure when you stop and uh, have to walk away from the car. And I'm just gonna take it. And when I go on my photography adventures for, you know, overnight trips, it can uh, come in the car with me, because that's where I sleep. When I'm out of winter wetlands or anywhere like that, just pop it in the car with me. And I know, the same thing, you know, <laughs> going to sneak around at night, come and take it. So that's my reasoning for having an inflatable. And I suppose let's just talk about yeah, how comfortable it is, how it's going for me as far as photography wise. So we have a very, very comfortable seat. It's inflatable as well. I've got it pumped right up. You do that by mouth. We have two tanks, one on the outside, one on the inside, and they're both in the same enclosure. They're just such a solid, solidly made canoe. And I, you know, I think it'd be really hard to get a hole in these. You'd need a pin to be able to get through the double layers of material. The outside's still after, uh, how long now? Oh months something like that I've had it it's still the, the outside material is still beading the water off this is the seat for the lagoon one it's not inflated properly at the minute but it's about 70 millimeters thick and it's very very comfortable especially when I have it pumped up you know to its fullest this is the backing that's fixed on that's foam and it is really comfortable we have this strap on the back to fix so that it stays reasonably well in place. You know, it doesn't fall down like that when we're uh, moving you know, forward to reach out to something. It stays in a fixed position. A mouthpiece to blow up this back part. And we have a zip to access the bladder if we get a hole in it. Now here's the deck. So this is removable so we can clean it. And, you know, if it gets wet, dry it out. That is a rubbery foam, it's about 10 mil thick, and it just helps to keep the, the bottom of the canoe much more stable and firm. The bottom of the canoe is a material rubber compound. It's probably about two and a half mil thick, maybe a little bit more than that. Same on the outside. If you're kayaking in a lake that has lots of trees that are hidden underwater and they might have a sharp branch that's sticking up and we get on the right angle with the right amount of pressure, we could tear that. It won't sink, we'll end up with a bit of a cold bathtub. <laughs> it won't sink because we have those bladders inside that'll hold us up. But yeah, it's going to be hard to row back with all that weight that'll be in there. But at least you know, we're not going to sink. 
we, yeah, if we've got the camera gear on we'll be okay and we can get back to land eventually for the bladders they're easy to pull out it's all in one piece make some room it's the internal bladder we can pull this out so that we can clean the inside of the canoe you can get right in there brush out all that sand that's going to you know slowly rub away and then end up putting a hole in this material and then probably eventually into the bladder itself so we need to get that out so having it being able to pull this bladder out just makes life so much easier get in there with our little hand brush get right inside and get rid of all that and also wiping it down for what water might have got in there and keeping everything nice and clean. I generally put, after I've done all my cleaning and wiping down, I put this into my lounge room and let it dry out for a couple of days. It's easy access to get into the bladder itself if we do, you know, for some reason get a hole in it. We have the zip there, big zip that goes all the way around so we can access each point. We'll, and as I said, there's two bladders in there, one for the inside and one for the outside. We also have this deck bladder that holds the decking up on the side here. It just helps hold its shape better, keep it all a bit tighter on that top part. We have a handle at each end, so two people carrying it. But I'm a one-man band, and I would have loved a handle on each side would have made it easier for me. It cruises through the water like I expected. It's not the fastest thing in the water, that's for sure. Competing against, you know, oh, we've got the sun coming up now, here she is. Yeah, you can't compete against the smoothness of a solid canoe. So a fiberglass one, just cut through the water, where this is a bit more sluggish. It doesn't have the streamlining underneath to be able to achieve that. Now for me to keep up with this guy on the other side of the lake, I would have to put in twice as much effort to keep up with him. His craft is designed for speed. This is just for fun. We're not worrying about competing with him. Let's go at our own pace because we're photographers. We're not high-speed canoeists. Now this is their lowest brand from Advanced Elements, but it's just as solid as the rest of them. It's just, there's less of it to make it cheaper. So with the next one up, which looks identical to this, except for the accessories. So that has a frame that you put inside, an aluminum tubing so that you get it a little bit more streamlined in the water. I'm going to come over this way so I'm in the sun a little bit more now. It's just starting to hit the water towards the edge. But we'll just talk a little bit about the photography side of it. I bought the canoe so that I could get birds that I can't get from the land. Just can't get in the right position to get them and they get they're very flighty. Whether you're on the land or in the water, it makes no difference, they're just exactly the same. Now getting out on the water, the idea is that we get a different perspective, we get a much better chance of getting a clear shot, getting away from all the reeds and things like that. Just all those little elements, we can get them all together possibility of shots we'd never ever, ever be able to achieve from the land. So it's just those reasons that I bought this. Plus, more adventures. Getting out on the water this early in the morning. It's beautiful. You can hear yeah, cars and stuff in the background, but that's just from where I am. Um, the suburbia is very close. Getting to know how to photograph stuff, I'm starting to get some techniques up with this canoe. 
just gentle little touches like this just keeps you moving enough that if there's a slight breeze around it doesn't push you backwards and it's coming straight at you or push you off to the side tipping it is going to be extremely difficult to do you have to be doing something really dumb for that to happen overall experience really enjoying it uh, mounting things on for photography I haven't done the right thing I've made this container out of stormwater piping and uh, inspection cap on there and I've got this working right for me now I've got this handle on the lid and that's made all the difference so I just have to hold it down there it's velcroed in that isn't all that good if it falls into the water for some stupid reason it floats with the camera in it I've done all those experiments uh, 200 once it gets down to about 200 millimeters under the water that pressure is enough that if you haven't put the cap on tight enough that it will start to leak so for all those sort of elements to come together I think are fairly remote but I am taking a chance because Murphy's Law if it can happen there's a likelihood it might there's an extra piece of equipment that you can put onto these cost a hundred dollars at the minute and that is a, a bag that's fairly what waterproof and uh, it has an inside bag in it as well so it's sort of double waterproofed but you know it's not probably as safe as this I'm going to buy one and give it a go if it's no good for putting my camera in, well, we'll come back to this. But it just annoys me Look, it, for blogging. It's in the camera's face. This big bulky bloody thing. It, it, you know, it's a heavy, very heavy weight. So with the camera and the container together, it just makes all this material sort of flop. Uh, the only way I'm just connecting it is with Velcro and the bungee strap that's uh, on for you yeah, putting some jacket or whatever you want in that little bit of a bungee sort of ropes. As far as photography goes, keeping it secure, yeah, we'll just have to give that extra bag that connects on a go. That straps on and that's just unzip and unclip and unfold, pull the camera out. Alright, I'm going to shut up now and enjoy being out on the water. Well, let's talk about photography on the water. Let's put this away before we have any accidents. Now behind me, there's some small birds that get into these reeds and they're extremely difficult to get. On land, it can actually be better. In the water, it's a bit more of a challenge. You know, we just dip those little paddles in each side, keep ourselves stable, without making splashes and too much movement that we frighten them. We just need to slightly drift. So you see how the breeze is affecting me now? It's pushing me sideways, because I'm not moving. As far as uh, distortion off the water, you can get that you know, not looking like it's focused properly because of the heat haze off the water. Like now you've got that exchange of temperatures with the water being much warmer than the land. That can happen, but also we've got to deal with this fog stuff. Can you see it behind me? No, you can't. You can over there. That gets in the way of having good focus as well. Now I'm going to turn around and we're going to go down this little waterway into all the reeds. The yeah, breeze is working against me. reeds in the way. That flies across 
the other side. All right, we'll go over there. Move up a little bit. Hello, moved in a bit further. I think it's time for me to head on down to where some grebes are that I've been wanting to get photographs of for so, so long. We'll see how we go down there and uh, have a bit of fun. But yeah, the technique, just being stealth as much as possible, not getting in a canoe speeding. This is too fast, just at a very gentle speed, using our paddles very gently in the water so that we can keep control. It's vital to really understand and get good at it. I'm still working at it, but I'm getting there now, giving myself the best chance to get a shot. Just like on land though, it, it, it's all about taking the time to slow down sure that we're not making huge movements just like I'm doing now. Now I've been after shots of these guys for so long and here I get the whole shebang. Chicks on the back, mum with a fish in her mouth and she's still trying to get it down there Bob. Their nest must be over here, that's why they're hanging around in this spot. I'm just taking the kids out for a bit of a exercise. Get some get some food. That's better. Oh, it's better, but I'm just drifting a little bit too much. That's better. Got some nice control and just hope that we stay here for a little bit in this one spot. But I think it's time to uh, wrap up this video. Yeah, the lagoon one suits me down the ground. It just works out beautifully with photography. So stable, so well made. And also, noisy kids in the background. <laughs> photography wise, yeah, it's just beautiful. Really helped me out with getting good opportunities of taking photographs on the water. Now, if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face just down there in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Hit the little bell. You'll get notification whenever I do anything else. And if you want to go and have a look at all the other mad and crazy things I've been doing in the past, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. Take it to my channel. I talk about photographing and filming in the forest and open forest environments, on the water. And um, whenever I go on adventures, I always take you with me. When I buy cameras and camera equipment, like canoes I do reviews on them and give you my honest opinion on them so go and have a browse there'll be something there if you just do I am sure you just remember if you don't do you don't get so get out there and start photographing and filming my life and I'll catch you on the next one bye